And keep in mind, this is a 360 million parameter writing C++. So Facebook or Meta have released a new family of very tiny language models called Mobile LLM-R1. Now we can see from this list of the actual models contained in the family, the largest of this release is 950 million parameters, followed by a 360 million parameter variant, and then finally, the smallest is 140 million parameters, which is obviously extremely small. So if we look a little further into these models, we will see that first and foremost, these are in fact reasoning models, which makes them somewhat interesting to observe when they're actually trying to come up with an answer. Now, now beyond this, something that was initially kind of disappointing to see, at least for myself personally, was that these are not general purpose chat models. They are specifically trained to do math, coding, and scientific questions and answering those types of queries. Now fortunately, if we scroll down here, you can just see in the inference example, it would be rather simple to just change some of the text contained in kind of guiding the model's purpose and telling it what it is and how it should answer. So of course in this video we will embark on some out of scope testing to see how these models handle general like chat queries and things like that. In terms of some importance, um, like technical considerations and things like that, they do actually release the complete training recipes and data sources to ensure reproducibility and support further research, which is awesome to see. And if we scroll down all the way, we will see an example of that where in the different phases of the training, they show the data mix and the actual specific links to the data sets and things like that. In terms of license, they have this listed as a fair NC license. Now, I'm not up to scope or date with all of these specific types of licenses that do exist, but when I do see one that is not commonly observed in a lot of the models I cover, I do like to just specifically mention it since it is important to a lot of folks. Now, in terms of a little more technical information, or at least seeing like what drove the creation of these models, the linked research report that is actually just hyperlinked right here in this line under the model family, we can see right here that this is actually over a year old. And beyond that, something I find really cool here is the emphasis they have placed on the actual like use of small models with mobile devices. So there's a table right here listing a bunch of different mobile hardware. And beyond that, they actually have specific power measures measurements of like how much electricity a phone is using to run a 7 billion parameter model, assuming a speed of 10 tokens per second and stuff like that. So it's just really kind of cool how focused this is on edge device like LLM deployment scenarios. The only other thing I'd like to mention here from this paper that I find interesting is Somewhere down here, they mentioned the model at a size of 350 million parameters, actually performing comparably to a Llama V2 7B model for specific API calling tasks. So the example they give right here is just like saying, help me set an alarm for 7.30 a.m. and then seeing if the model correctly outputs something that would do that along with an agent response like, sure, your alarm is set here. So they trained and not the specific model that we're going to be using here, but the mobile LLM family. So it was like a, I believe, architecturally similar model to what we're going to be playing with. And that one was very performant comparatively to models of a much larger size. So just some kind of cool things to see. And that gives us a little background information as to the purpose of these models existence, I suppose could be said. Now, please keep in mind that when we do run these right now, if we click on any one of these, we will see that the tensor type right here is F32. And to put that quite simply, it means that the amount of VRAM utilization we are going to see is going to be much higher than one would expect given the sizes of these models. So with that, we do have some vibe coded web interfaces and things of the sort to actually go ahead and play with. And take note that currently my GPU is using around 0.9 gigs of VRAM just as a baseline because of the screen recording software. So we'll keep that in mind when we run the model. So here's a nice little vibe coded web chat interface that I will put on GitHub as a gist. If this video gets 10,000, no, I'll put it up. I'll put a link in the description and we can just select any one of the model sizes of this family as well as the scenario button right here, which will basically just select like one of these specific like um, guiding uh, dictations of how the model should act. I guess could be said. So first and foremost, let's just use the 950 million parameter model and let's ask it what is 25 plus 37. So 
Let's take note how it goes here. So the VRAM utilization has jumped up rather significantly to four and a half gigs, but we can see that the model is actually reasoning and outputting a chain of thought, which is quite interesting, especially when considering the size of these models, which this one is 950 million parameters that we're using right now. And it does culminate in the correct answer of 62 right here. We can see its chain of thought, obviously, it would probably be less interesting to just spend a lot of time running through like scientific examples like this, but it's just cool to see, I guess, the functionality and things like that. So let's ask the, okay, 360 million parameter model in C++ coding mode to write a C++ program that prints hello world. And keep in mind, this is a 360 million parameter writing C++. I'm not like a C++ pro, but if we look through this kind of chain of thought here, we can be entertained by how adorable it is for this small model to come up with code. But beyond that, it does seem that this did actually correctly formulate this simple snippet of code in C++, which is really quite cool. Now, I have tested the 140 million parameter model as well, and we'll just try the very simple math problem here. Unfortunately, it does not seem to get the correct answer, but I will say it does end up coming with some... Okay, well, it just made me eat my words, but I'm going to fight back here because I'm going to look like a fool. This thing generated like 20-something thousand as an answer when I first tried this, so that's a lucky guess. We're going to try it again. Okay, good. All right, so I just wanted to prove that I wasn't just like trying to knock this model. Okay, so obviously we get different responses each time we run this, but it is just cool seeing a 140 million parameter actually thinking out here in relatively lucid English as well as actually performing some mathematical calculations. Now, obviously, this would get stale quite quickly, so we can go ahead and change into the out-of-scope testing here, which will be a little more entertaining. Now, as we refresh this page, we will see that instead of the specific science, math, and coding personas here, we have assistant personas, such as the professional assistant, creative storyteller, or friendly tutor. And here, I'm just going to go ahead and ask the models things that would be out of scope considering what was listed as the strengths for these models. Here's a question for the 950 million parameter model asking what is the best GPU for gaming. And of course, first and foremost, we actually see a chain of thought reminiscent of what would be seen with a much larger model where it starts to think like, okay, hmm, I need to think what is the best GPU for gaming. And it's mentioning some things that perhaps are hallucinations. However, it is also mentioning some actual like proper concepts that it should be considering. I should move my mouse away from the answer pane. I do apologize for that. And I don't want to full screen this because it's actually harder to see if I full screen this. This gets too wide and is nasty. So that's why we're testing it like this. But let me check online quickly, though I should pretend I'm an AI without access. That's concerning. Let me check online quickly in parentheses, though I should pretend I'm an AI without access. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the actual final answer here is the NVIDIA GeForce 6000 series V3000. Obviously not correct, but again, it's fun to kind of use these in ways they may not necessarily have been designed to be used. The AMD R9 290, isn't that a real card? Or That sounds more familiar than like the... Okay, the G4 6000 series, it's talking about resolutions and 16 by 9, 1080p, 4K res. So, you know, <laughs> let's try the 140, but let's put it into the friendly tutor mode. And look at this. It's probably going to go on a hallucination like loop here, but it is actually like it did start. I see three to four gigahertz mentioned there. And unfortunately, it does tend to just kind of end up but wait, alternatively, oh, it did end. Okay, it hit the token limit, so I have it set to 2048. You can max it out if you want, but if testing the smaller one here, I definitely would not recommend it as you will just basically get this going on for um, north of 8,000 tokens. Let's try Creative Storyteller 360 mil and then ask it for a funny story. And then it will load this model in so we can see the VRAM change kind of as we have different ones loaded. And I am now regretting setting the tokens to the max because we're likely going to just have to wait for this to finish <laughs> until we can see what the final answer is, if we even get one. So 
that is probably going to conclude what is undoubtedly one of my shorter videos, but I did find these models kind of interesting and wanted to showcase just both the um, designated way to use them as shown in the actual model card here, as well as a more fun but perhaps less performant way to interact with them. Overall, it's just cool to see tiny models come out, and I do find that there is like seemingly a trend towards more efficiency with things we see like the Quen 3 Next and stuff like that. So it was definitely worth covering these as they're cool, and seeing more open source releases coming from Meta or Facebook is obviously something that we all want to see, I would assume. So with that, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And I will put the scripts for both the like normal one where you can test them with math and science and coding, as well as the funny personas on GitHub as gist. So I'll just put that in the video description. Um, all right. Thanks for watching.